Hello everyone, this is the Glass Half Full, and today I'm going to review every single season of How I Met Your Mother, kinda, uh, okay not really, I'm actually going to review the first season, and here's why. Okay, so even though I've watched the show about two times at this point, I've forgotten a lot what happens. Okay, no, I remember the important plot points, but I don't remember why they happen, or where they do happen. And since I've never seen anyone review every season of How I Your Mother, I thought to myself, Hey, I should review every season of How I Your Mother. It probably won't be too hard. Update, it was hard. And not only will I review every single season, but I'll also review every single episode. Because I have nothing better to do with my life. Okay, so before I start, let me see how this is going to work. Now you may ask yourself, wow, all the episodes in one season? That's going to take a really long time. And yes, it did. But to save time and to save me some editing, I'm going to review almost every episode in about... 30 seconds to a minute. That should give me enough time to talk about the episode itself, some significant moments, and overall if I like the episode or not. However, some episodes need a longer review than others because... Actually... You'll just see for yourself. Oh yeah, if you're wondering how I'm gonna rate all these episodes, I'm gonna give it a rating out of 5. But, to be original and, uh... Cool... I guess... I'm gonna give each number a word to represent it, which will be 1 is lame, 2 is okay, 3 is good, 4 is great, and 5 will be legendary, for obvious reasons. So with that out of the way, let's talk about Season 1, Episode 1, Pilot. Okay, why do they call every show's first episode Pilot? Like, come on, just be original. Like me. So I got my notebook, got my pencil, got my goldfish. This is very important, by the way. So without further ado, here's my review of How My Mother Season 1. Let's go. Damn it. Such a good take. Not to do it all. Okay, sorry. Episode 1. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, I, I gotta talk about this one more extensively. This one's important, because it's the, it's the first episode. But don't, don't worry, it'll, it'll go faster from here. So watching episode one again made me feel a lot of nostalgia. And although I remember this episode pretty well, because it's the first episode, I still notice things that I haven't noticed before. Like how pretty Robin is in this episode, you should start seeing like this, considering what happens later to her in the series. And damn, I completely forgot that Barney ever kissed Marshall. Most importantly, I just like how this episode gives a clear understanding of who these characters are and what their personalities are like. We can tell that Ted is a hopeless romantic that can sometimes be a bit crazy, but means well. Marshall, who is a lovable teddy bear that only wants the best for him and his friends. Lily, a passionate person who prioritizes her friendships and wants to do good, even though she can be a bit selfish at times. And Barney, who's kind of an asshole who only wants to have sex with women and do legendary things with the gang. We see their personalities shine from arguably the first scene they appear in. Uh, not so much Robin because she's not yet part of the gang, but we do see her sarcastic attitude and her drive to become a news reporter. So of course we get the infamous blue French horn, Ted's first of many romantic gestures, Ted's kids and the infamous I love you scene. But most importantly, we get Ron Jeet the best side character in the whole show. And to honor his existence, I'm going to put a Ranji counter in the corner for every time he makes an appearance in the series. I give this episode a great. Season 1, Episode 2, Purple Giraffe. Still love Circle Robin, Ted decides not to throw one, not two, but three parties for her. But afterwards, she tells him that she's not looking for a relationship right now. Cool episode, and it's a good way to start off the main gang. I give it a good. Season 1, Episode 3, The Sweet Taste of Liberty. Barney and Ted go off to Philadelphia to pick up some girls, but go off to lick the Liberty Bell instead. This episode is the first of many misadventures with Ted and Barney. But one thing of note, Barney claims that he's already tired of McLaren's, which is kinda ironic since it's the third episode of the series, and McLaren's is basically the main setting of the show. I give this episode a great. 
Season 1, Episode 4, The Return of the Shirt. Ted finds an old shirt that everyone loves. Honestly, I think it's pretty overrated. As he decides to call one of his ex-girlfriends again, Natalie. Which, uh, doesn't work out for him. This episode has a pretty unique message with the whole leaving stuff from the past kind of thing. And I want to mention one more detail. Marshall claims he'd rather get it done by phone than in real life. I don't know why I mentioned that. It's not like that has serious repercussions and foreshadows anything in the future. <laughs> Overall, I give this episode a good. Season 1, Episode 5. Okay, awesome. Basically, Barney grinds on his cousin for the whole episode. Yeah, that's basically it. This episode was okay. Moving on. Season 1, Episode 6. The... The, uh... Um... Uh... Bad, the, the very, very bad pumpkin. Yeah, yeah, that works. Ted waits for his destined pumpkin to come to a Halloween party, while Marshall and Lily have a double date with Robin and her boyfriend. In this episode, we truly see how far Ted can go for love. As a contrast, we see how Robin never tends to take love seriously. I give this episode an okay. Season 1, Episode 7, Matchmaker. Ted goes to a matchmaker to find this true love, but is met with failure. Meanwhile, Marshall and Lily try to get over a cockamouse that's in an apartment. It's a it's a combination between a cockroach and a mouse. I can also fly. The show proves that it can take weird concepts with the B plot and all and make it work. I give this episode a great. Season 1, Episode 8, The Duel. Lily's apartment has now turned to a Chinese restaurant, so she officially goes and lives with Ted and Marshall, which pisses Ted off. This leads to Ted and Marshall fighting for their apartment in the most epic way possible. A sword fight. Not, not the weird kind. Amidst the action, Marshall accidentally stabs Lily and fucking kills her. <laughs> <clears throat> the highlight of this episode is just seeing Marshall and Ted bro out with swords. It's so natural and you really feel like these are best friends hanging out and not just two actors reading from a script. I bestow the duel, the very first legendary, of the series. Season 1, Episode 9, Belly Full of Turkey. How my mother's first Thanksgiving episode. In this episode, Lily decides to go spend Slap's gift. Oh, wait, sorry, that doesn't happen till later. Spend Thanksgiving with Marshall's tall ass family. This episode, while not better than other Thanksgiving episodes to come, is still pretty good. And is the first mention of Rob being a Canadian, which as a Canadian myself makes me pretty happy. And also, Ted meets a stripper named Tracy. Hmm, I don't know why I mentioned that. That's really weird. Anyway, I give this episode a great. Season 1, Episode 10, The Pineapple Incident. Ted gets super drunk to take his mind off Robin, and proceeds to forget the whole night. Ted wakes up the next morning with a girl in his bed, a sprained ankle, and a pineapple on his dresser. Wait, dr dresser, dr dresser. What the, what the fuck? I said, who says dresser? Throughout the episode, we learn how he got all those things, but in the end, we never find out where he got the pineapple. Or do we? Overall hilarious episode, I give it a great. Season 1, Episode 11, The Limo. It's New Year's 2005, and Ted wants to make it a great one, so he rents out a limo. And who exactly is driving the limo? None other than Ranjit! Which makes our counter go to two. Also in this episode, we get to hear Barney's Get Psyched mix. Shot through the heart. And you're to blame, baby, you gave So, uh, yeah, they get into some mishaps, and before you know it, it's 2006. This was a great episode, showcasing our five main characters and how well they play off each other. I was debating giving this episode a great or a legendary, but because of Ranjit, I think I have to give it a legendary. Season 1, episode 12, The Wedding. Like Bellyful of Turkey, this is the first of many, many, Wedding episodes. Ted invites Robin to the wedding, but she couldn't come last minute, leaving Ted to go to the wedding by himself. But there, he lays eyes on his first to be girlfriend of the show, Victoria. Season 1, episode 13. Drum roll, please. Coming right after the last episode, Ted has laid eyes on a girl at the wedding and proceeds to get to know her for the rest of the episode. Victoria never ended up giving her phone number to Ted, but that didn't stop him. After finding out that she was the one who made the cake, they officially start dating. Drumroll please show that sometimes it's worth taking a risk no matter if it turns out to be a mistake or not. And we find out that Robin has feelings for Ted. It's... it's the other way around now. Let's go. 
I give this episode a good. Season 1, Episode 4, Zip Zip Zip. It's Martin and Lily's 9 year anniversary, and they spend it in the washroom waiting for Ted and Victoria to have sex. This episode also has our first instance of Barney and Robin on their first bros night out, where we find out that Barney and Robin might be more like than we think, and they could become more than just friends in the upcoming seasons. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I give this episode a good. Season 1, Episode 15, Game Night. While playing a game Marshall invented, Lily says someone named Shannon gave her a tape to give to Barney, which she immediately gets nervous over. In the tape, we see a younger, hippie Barney singing a song to his ex Shannon about how much he misses her, which is totally out of character for Barney. This leads Barney to finally tell his mysterious backstory. Only if Ted tells him the embarrassing story first. That's when we find out that Ted actually went back to Robin's apartment the first night they met, and threw up on her doormat, which only Barney and RUNJEET! knew about. Anyway, back to Barney's backstory, he had planned to travel the world with his girlfriend, which ultimately fell through because Shannon was cheating on him. Barney now heartbroken, he finds a flyer for suit up, and then we see a montage of how Barney became the suit wearing girl playing stud we all know him as today. This episode we get a glimpse at how Barney might actually not be who we think, instead of a guy who only cares about sex and being awesome, is actually heartbroken and seeking validation. Definitely a great episode. Season 1, Episode 16. Cupcake. Ted and Victoria's relationship comes to a stop when suddenly Victoria gets accepted for a culinary internship in Germany, which she accepts, forcing them to break up. But by the end of the episode, they decide to go long distance, which leads to Ted making the worst decision of his life. I give this episode an okay. Season 1, Episode 17, Life Among the Monkeys. We see in this episode that Marshall always had a dream to become an environmental lawyer, and we cut back to present day where Marshall now works at Barney's firm, which actively tries to kill the environment. But no matter how much he hates it, he has to stay for Lily's sake. Meanwhile, Ted realizes that he's not happy doing a long distance relationship with Victoria, and Victoria tells him that we need to talk, which alludes to a breakup. However, instead of getting a call from Victoria, he gets a call from Robin instead, asking him to come over. And cliffhanger. This episode sets up the next one quite perfectly, and leaves the audience quite eager, but also scared in a way, to what happens next. So yeah, Marshall and Lily do some karaoke, and we get the first ever mention of Barney's mysterious job, please. I give this episode a steak sauce. <laughs> you see, it's funny, because in the episode, they say steak sauce as another word for awesome. So it's like I'm... I, I, I don't know why I try. I give this episode a good. The next episode is um pretty important, to say the least. Season 1, Episode 18. Nothing good ever happens after 2 a.m. This episode picks up right after the last one with Robin's phone call. Now, Ted must decide whether or not to go to Robin's house without calling Victoria. Since it's pretty late, Ted starts to hallucinate in the cab and truly contemplates whether he should go or not. And that's when someone calls him, which is of course, Crean Elvis. I'm actually not kidding. But also Lily, who tells him that Robin still likes him, but he should go home. Which only encourages him to go even more. He gets there and after some small talk, she asks if Victoria broke up with him yet. Which he responds with a no, lying to Robin. He knew at this point he was in too deep and had to leave before something bad happened. However, as he tried to say goodbye to her, he hooks up with her instead. Wow. Okay, pause. Rewatching that really, really got me down. Even though I knew exactly what was gonna happen, as the scene came on, my heart just sank. Just seeing Ted, the character we usually root for, cheating on Victoria. Because as an audience, we all want Ted to do the right thing. Go home and just go to sleep. But we also know how crazy is Ted is for Robin. And this is the chance he was waiting for. But we didn't think he'd actually go through with it. This really reminded me of the episode Escape from LA from Bojack Horseman. Because our two main characters have the chance to do the mature and responsible thing. But due to our knowledge leading up to this moment about these two characters, we know that they'll most likely end up making a mistake. And that's exactly what happens. 
Ted goes to the washroom to freshen up and to call Victoria to finally break up with her and try to justify his actions, saying, hey, you didn't call me before, or you were going to break up with me anyway, so why does it matter? But deep down, he knows he was in the wrong, and he's done something horrible, and he's not going to get away with it. That's when Ted realizes he doesn't have his phone, and Robin just finished talking to Victoria and kicks him out. Ted goes home and breaks up with Victoria in the cab and goes to bed regretting everything that just happened. And the thing his mother told him when he was little still rings true. Nothing good ever happens after 2 a.m. As much as this hurts rewatching, I have to give this a legendary. I remember before I used to think, wow, this is Ted's worst mistake, but it's the only the first season. But now it makes sense why this happened so early on in the series. Because Ted needs to realize how love can ultimately lead to pain and regret. And your drive to get a certain person can not only hurt them, but others as well. And in this episode, we see Ted talk to Victoria, or so it makes it out to be. But we all know that it isn't. And the Victoria we just imagining was more like a mirror. And he was just arguing with himself, being super conflicted about what he just did. And although this event would stay with him no matter what, he'll grow and change as a result. So he never ever does it again, no matter what. On a lighter note, Lily knees Korean elbows in the balls. Take that how you will. Season 1, Episode 19. Marry the Paralegal. Nothing too notable in this episode except that Robin is still pissed at Ted obviously, and Ted and Marshall have a really cool telepathic conversation. Overall an okay episode. Season 1, Episode 20, Best Prom Ever. Marshall and Lily book their wedding at their dream location in two months. As the episode progresses, we see Lily get more and more anxious for the wedding, which is slowly approaching, and we get flashbacks to how Lily never got to live out her dreams, like becoming a painter or living overseas. Overall, a pretty good episode. Episode ends with Ted and Robin somewhat making up and more foreshadowing that Lily and Marshall's relationship might take a turn for the worse, which we see more in Season 1, Episode 21, Milk. Episode begins with Ted turning 28 and saying how he's ready for the perfect girl to come to him, which, coincidentally, the matchmaker from Episode 7 has finally found a match for Ted, which Bob from Good Luck Charlie notifies him about. As Ted waits for his soulmate to arrive, he has a call from Lily, saying she's going to an interview for a fellow art ship in San Francisco, which is during the time of her wedding, and Marshall doesn't know a thing. Ted ends up skipping on his date with his soulmate, because after reconnecting with Robin, he decides to try going for her once more. I would like to mention that Lily makes Marshall pancakes in this episode. Trust me, it's going to be more important in the next season. And also, we get their very first mention of the GOAT. Yeah, and the episode is good. The season 1 finale, come on. Coming from the last episode, Ted tells the gang he wants to go for Robin once more. His idea this time? To get a whole blue orchestra relating to the night they first met. Unsure because she has a camping trip with Sandy Rivers, Ted must do everything in his power to make sure she doesn't go on that trip. That's when he gets a brilliant idea to make it rain. After consulting with one of Barney's exes, he learns a sacred rain dance and tests the universe with his luck. Meanwhile, Marshall and Lily are on the middle of their second biggest fight of their life, as Marshall overhears a call from the Fellowship, which they learn Lily got in. They try to take her mind off it by doing other things, but it only works for so long, as Marshall gets afraid that Lily might try leaving him forever. We cut back to Ten and Barney, where he finally makes it rain. Being very eager, he rushes to Robin's apartment in the rain as he finally, after chasing her for the whole season, seals a deal and they actually start dating. The next day, Ted arrives home to tell Lily and Marshall the good news, only to find Marshall by himself with his wedding ring. As a new relationship blossoms, another one closes, thus ending off season one of How I Met Your Mother. If we were to describe season one in one sentence, it'd probably be above average sitcom, but with a lot of potential. Like I said before, How My Mother is different from most sitcoms. 
It has more of an overarching story and it has more character development than other shows. And you can see this play out from many different episodes like Nothing Good Happens After 2am or Game Night. Honestly, I enjoy watching season 1 a lot more than I thought I would. To me, the first two seasons of How My Mother aren't as good as the seasons following them, but damn, they're still enjoyable. Like seriously, I cannot count the many times I laugh my ass off while watching some of these episodes. And the episodes themselves really handle drama and comedy very well. Like in episode The Duel, which is probably my favorite episode of the season. In an age where beginning of shows can feel kind of lackluster or boring, How My Mother has a pretty good start to the series. And as for the characters and story arcs, they're kind of a mixed bag. Obviously, Ted's main focus for the season is getting with Robin, which I completely forgot how obsessed he was, and it often felt too much at times. It definitely annoyed me at the start, but as I got to episode 18, it came full circle and understood why the writers made him so obsessed in the first place. But I already talked about that, so I'm going to move on to Lillian Marshall. Of course, the whole reason why Ted's journey started in the first place was because Marshall and Lily got engaged, which we were led to believe that they would get married by the end of the season, which of course never happened. From a storytelling perspective, this makes sense, because up until the finale, Marshall and Lily felt as though they're the same character. Yes, they had different personalities and goals, but most episodes had them together in the same plot. Also, I just like all the clues in the foreshadowing to this inevitable breakup. So, I've heard a lot of people online hating on Lily because of this, and yeah, I sorta of do too, but it really fits her character and I understand why she had to go through it. Lily always had dreams to become something big, becoming a painter and whatnot, but couldn't go through with it because she always prioritized her relationship with Marshall first. Lily always wanted to change from the norm, and to explore, and in order to do so, she had to make a sacrifice. She only realized this when the wedding was only two months away, and she thought if she gets married, she would never get the chance to do anything she wanted to. Uh, honestly, I can personally relate to more to Lily than ever because of the whole pandemic. I was honestly really looking forward to going outside and doing things I never got the chance to do before, but now I'm stuck at home, reviewing a 15 year old show. Not not that I'm not having fun with it, obviously. I, I would do it either way, but, uh, you know, I, I'd like to go outside every now and then, right? Yes, Lily was an asshole, leaving Marshall on short notice after a nine-year relationship right before their marriage. But I can understand why she did it. It was necessary for her to do this to somewhat accomplish goals from the past, and we'll see how that results in the next season. As for Robin, she looks like she's trying to find her place in the show. She was more of a goal for Ted and hasn't had enough time to shape her own identity yet. However, we do see her passion to become a news reporter very heavily and see her go from someone who just reports stories to a full on lead anchor by the end, but this is only the beginning of her career. Finally for Barney, he's definitely the least expanding on the season. He's mostly used as a comedy relief or a gag more than I remember. This is fine though because we do get tiny bits of foreshadowing for how he actually is in the episode Game Night. So, although it doesn't have a character specific arc as of right now, we only see that change as time goes on. But I would like it more if we got one or two more Barney centric episodes in season one. As for some negatives, the laugh track can be overplayed at times, and episodes like OK Awesome or The Slutty Pumpkin didn't live up like I imagined them to. I also would have preferred if we got more foreshadowing or hints for the upcoming seasons from Future Ted. With Tell Your Mother having a concept such as this, like Ted telling stories from the past, I would have liked if we got more hints and for upcoming seasons to keep an eye out, you know? Just like how Ted mentions the goat. Which is good, but I wish we just got more of that. Eh, maybe I'm being picky at this point, but it would be appreciated. All in all, season one was way better than I remembered it to. Sure, there are average episodes here and there, but on the flip side, there are some really, really good episodes as well. So that about wraps up everything for season one. Make sure to subscribe so you'll know the next time I'll upload my next review of the series. Also, let me know what was your favorite episode from season one, because I'm actually really curious to see your thoughts on it as well. <sighs> so that's all the time I have here today. Until next time, 
This is a glass half full. I'll see you in season two.